I'm going to talk to you today about AI. Right? There are a lot of uh, you know, preconceptions, misconceptions that are going around about AI. And what I'm going to try and do in the next few minutes is kind of set the record straight. Okay? Uh, so AI is hot. Right? So all of you know this. You're seeing this in your daily life. So you have AI that helps you tag phases in your Facebook post. You know, people talk about AI driving vehicles. And I think pretty sure there are some of you in the audience who talk more to AI every day on your phone than you talk to human beings. Right? So AI is hot. Right? So we're talking about AI reaching like superhuman level performance. What is all this excitement in AI? Right? So let me give you one example of something that appeared in the newspapers. So the Navy, the US Navy, revealed the embryo of a computer that it expects will be able to walk, talk, see, write, reproduce itself, and be conscious of its existence. Wow. Cutting edge AI, right? But that is an article from 1958, not now. What has really happened with AI? Right? So let's take a closer look. Right? So AI, you have the driver, which is like the AI algorithms. Okay? That's like the driver of, the, of a car. So why was AI not that successful earlier? Right? People looked at the driver and then said, ha, okay, this is guy who's going to do amazing stuff for me. But then the driver was driving this car earlier. Right? So this is, this is a vehicle that the driver was driving, so you know, I don't expect him to do that well. Right? But then you have this new AI. Right? So that's, that's the, he's driving that car. The driver is still the same driver, but this new car has better engine, right? has more fuel. Right? The fuel is the data, engine is the compute. And since he's able to drive this new vehicle, he's doing a lot better. Right? The driver is still the same driver. The AI hasn't changed. The, the, the technology behind AI hasn't changed. Right? Maybe a little bit touched up, but the technology is still very much the same. Right? So what has this led us to? Right? So it has led us to AI everywhere. AI in healthcare, AI in agriculture, AI in security, transportation, construction. Like, you see AI everywhere. Right? AI is this panacea that has solved all our problems. Right? That's one narrative that you get about AI. Right? But then there's yet another narrative about AI. Right? So that, that is AI. Like AI as a menace. Right? So is that what's going to happen? Let's not worry about James Cameron telling us AI is going to kill us. Uh, we can ask other people. So Elon Musk says AI could doom humankind. Zuckerberg disagrees, which is the truth. Right? But right now, Zuckerberg's reliability is a little low. So let's, let's ask somebody else, right? So Elon Musk is wrong. Right? That's not me saying that. That is uh, the, the, uh, the president of uh, the AI Association, right? the Global AI Association, Toby Walsh, who says that Elon Musk is wrong. The AI singularity is not going to kill us. Right? And then there was a survey that was done about uh, 50 uh, Nobel laureates. Right? And uh, they ranked things like climate, right? population rise, nuclear war, and a whole bunch of things, including some individuals. Uh, who are more dangerous to humankind than AI, right? So um, it's not really I'd come there yet, right? So you will see why as, as, I, as I finish my talk, why AI is not there yet, right? So I don't think uh, that's a worry for us. Okay, if AI is not going to kill us, are they going to kill our jobs, right? So you know, you can say, oh, if you're not good for anything, at least you can go work in a restaurant, but maybe you, even that is not open to you anymore. And, uh, so what is, the, what is the narrative, right? For every story out there that says the robots are taking over, there are no more jobs available to you, there's another job, another story out there that says jobs are safe, right? Jobs are going, you know, new jobs are being created, okay? So it, all of these are equally well-informed studies, okay? So which narrative do you believe? Are jobs going to go? or jobs going to stay. But the point to note here is that all of these stories that I just flashed on the screen could very well have been about any disruptive technology that humans have seen in the past. Right? It's not just about AI. Right? Steam engines took away jobs. Industry automation took away jobs. Right? But then other opportunities were created, which were not envisaged earlier. Right? So at the time when steam engine took away jobs, if somebody had told you, oh, that is this job for you as a Java programmer. Right? So that would never enter your uh, uh, mind set at that point of time, right? So things are going to go, so you just have to make sure that we keep up, right? So let me go back to the first tag that I gave to AI, which is a superhuman, a superhuman performance. Is it really superhuman? 
So how many of you can see the polar bear in the picture out there? I'm pretty sure a lot of you can see the polar bear. That's fairly easy. Right? How many of you can see the insect in the picture out there? Most of you can, because I told you there's an insect. If I had just told you what is there in the picture, it would have taken you a while. But the AI is good. It gets all of it, right? So it's, it's, it's amazingly good. But then, right? What about this one? <laughs> easy. School bus. Right? So what about this one? I add a little bit of noise to the school bus, right? So what about the second picture? Is that still a school bus? Well, it's no, it's obviously an ostrich, right? That is what the AI tells you, right? This is the state of the art algorithms that are making these kinds of mistakes, right? We're talking about superhuman performance, and there are situations where you wouldn't even match human performance, right? So we have a long way to go before you can, you have to start fearing AI. Yeah, right? Um, but when you talk about human performance, here is a question I want to ask. Which human are we talking about? Right. So there was a study done by uh, the uh, MIT Media Lab called the Moral Machine. They asked people from different countries the question. You are driving down the highway. That is a barricade. Okay, you, can, you have only two options. You, ca you can either crash into the barricade or swerve and hit a bunch of pedestrians. Which, what do you do? And the answers are not uniform. It turns out that uh, Europeans are more likely to save uh, children, right? While Asians are more likely to save old people if there are old people involved in the scenario, right? So the answer was not clear at all. There were significant cultural variations. So when I say human-like performance, which human am I asking you to be, right? Am I asking you to be like the Chinese or like the Europeans? We don't know, right? And when, when a person drives on the road, you don't ask him these questions. But when an AI starts driving on the road, you say, hmm, you have to drive like a human, right? And that's not clear to me what it is, right? You are holding AI to a higher standards than you hold other humans to, right? So that's something that, you know, that uh, we have to uh, moderate ourselves on, right? So what I'm going to give, I'm going to give it a tag now. AI is like a kid. Right? Maybe not this kid, maybe more like this kid. Right? So, so it's a very powerful kid, so you have to be careful with it. But there's still a long way to go before it becomes dangerous. Right? So summing up, so we are closer than ever to functional AI. Right? But the caveat is, again, right? we thought we were close to functional AI in the 60s. We thought we were close to functional AI in the 80s. Now, again, we think we are close to functional AI. So we have to be careful about that. Right? And, uh, and importantly, AI has started affecting all aspects of our life. If you don't believe me, right, the biggest proof I have is lawyers and lawmakers are talking about AI now. Right? That tells you that, hmm, okay, they sniff votes somewhere. Right? So, so it has to be affecting all aspects of human life. Right? And uh, so summing up, again, my biggest takeaway from this talk would be the danger of AI is not the technology itself, it's the humans who are going to use AI. So if you rush AI to market before the technology is ready, you're going to cause a lot more damage. Right? So that is something that's very important. So we need to be careful. We need to regulate things. Right? But um, also remember that AI's understanding of the world is like a two-year-old. Most successful technologies that you see there is something like how a two-year-old would watch people perform certain tasks and just repeat it without really understanding how that's happening. Right? So that's the kind of understanding that AI has of the world. And that's the reason why I said AI is a kid. And it has significant potential. Right? Let's not rush to judge AI soon and then kind of you know, stop everything too prematurely. Let's give it time and AI will work for you.